Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top 5 cards in Masters 25. I know I have been very critical on Masters 25, but that is in terms of box value, expected value. A lot of these cards are still very good pickups. I feel like they will have some time to drop, but now would be the time you want to pick them up. You can't always get a card at exactly the bottom. But it's better to get a card like Philea below $10 than have her eventually be $10 or more. Philea is very good, played in the human deck. Uh, it has seen a lot of play in modern recently. It's in one of the top two decks, I would say. It's also very good in ED8s. I play it in my ED8s decks. It's kind of a strange card to have, but when everyone's mana ramping and dropping big stuff, uh, having this one is kind of surprising. So the days of hoarding and speculation is kind of over. It's more like, do you want a play set? At most, do you want two play sets? Uh, two play sets makes it so you have one to play with, and then you have one to trade away into something. So from here on out, MTG Finance is not going to be, at least in this channel, it's not going to be about making money. Uh, it's very difficult to do that with the flood of reprints like it's insane to assume that you can make money as a single buyer at mtg finance today i know a lot of these websites will still make you believe it's possible it is not the math does not work out especially if you there's the cost of opportunity it's where if i bought a hundred of these it would be a thousand dollars so if i sat on this for a year I could put that $1,000 in a bond, maybe a government bond. I could put the $1,000 in some of the stock market or even Bitcoins and they would go up or down just like Filia. But the liquidness, so if I put it in a bond for one year or a CD at a bank, I'm guaranteed to be able to get my money back. Here, there's no guarantee. Uh, even if it looks like it goes up, you still have to buy list it. You still have to find 100 or... A, at least 25 buyers who want a playset a piece at a price which includes shipping paypal so my objective is to make sure that your trade binder is quite solid in the future i love this card at below 15 dollars like there's not much i need to say the artwork is fantastic uh, she was she doesn't see any play right now in modern in edh she does see a play pretty much in every green deck However, as we saw from Amulet Bloom, which was a deck that did use her, her price went insane when she was played in a deck. Uh, now, she is a rare, uh, and she has new artwork. I think the new artwork is definitely a bonus. Uh, it is the same as the Judge promo artwork. I've always felt that's kind of strange to do that. I think this is the preferred artwork, in my opinion. I, the other original artwork will always be original so that the foil of the original will always be more expensive because it's harder to come by. Having this in your trade binder is a very interesting. I think that um, having eight of them is probably where I would be at. I would want to be at for this particular copy, mainly because you can out them one by one or you can bet on a deck, uh, a future deck coming. And I know it's coming because land or land. So Amulet Bloom is not the only deck that operates in that type of way. You have Prosperity Bloom, which was the first combo deck in Magic history. This type of mechanic where you want to drop multiple lands uh, is a viable. It's always kind of been viable. So I like the card because you can always get rid of it in EDHs. But there is the upside that another deck emerges like Amulet Bloom. Hopefully with people cheating less, right? All right, so I'm only going to pick one of the filter lands, but obviously all the filter lands are, are semi-okay. Cascade Bluff is cheaper. Uh, the Twilight one, the black, white, and the black green, uh, black green being Jund, of course, are the most expensive by far. Cascade Bluff is below eight bucks, right? Like there's not much I have to say about it. I like the colors. Uh, when you talk about colors, uh, it's interesting now because blue, blue is 
not in favor right now for this particular set of lands. So the Jun colors are more, or even Abzan, pretty much when you look at lands, and I've gone over this again, but just to repeat, you, I like to buy the cheapest of the set because you have no idea when a splinter twin like that comes and this actually sees play. And then suddenly it becomes the most expensive. I use the example of Temple Garden and what steam vents. So Temple Garden used to be three times the price of steam vents when it was in standard. They were both in standard. No one played is it and everyone played Silesnia. Well, then in modern after rotation, Splinter Twin became a deck. So guess which shock, shock land now became triple the price of the other one. With land, you always want to buy the cheapest buy-in possible um, and then have it as a trade binder. I think once, this is nice because people may want um, a few copies of it, which is better than Azusa, which until she sees major play. It's a good land. I don't think the filter lands are anything particularly special, like the fetch lands, but I also don't think they're going to be reprinted anytime soon. All right, uh, let's pick a cheaper card, Coalition Relic. Uh, this card is pretty much uh, played in every EDH deck. It is very, very good. Um, in my opinion, I think pretty much any mana generation, especially this one of utility, I've always had it in my EDH decks because I was lucky enough to get the Phyrexia versus the Coalition or something. For $4.25, this will trade heavy. Um, so when you talk about the tradeability aspect of it, people who already have a copy of this will probably trade into it because they realize how liquid this card is. It's at a good price point. $4 is a good buying in. It could easily hit 10 within a few years, assuming, again, not reprinted. The artwork is very nice. There's not much I can say that's bad about this card. The, a lot of times when I look at cards to accumulate, I look at the price point. I like to be between 2 to $4 because that means there's actual growth because I needed to triple to get make enough money to justify doing it. So Filear goes from two to 20, that's that's the way to do it. But if you go, if you have a card that goes from 20 to 30, you're still out money. That card didn't double, so I mean, or if you buy Lily for 90 and she goes to 110, it sounds like you made $20, but in actuality, you lost money. And that's just the harsh reality of MTG Finance. A lot of people won't tell you. There are margins everywhere and the higher you the more cards you accumulate the smaller your margins become because you lose the ability to out it or you do more work to out it i have the story of the underworld connections which i bought for eight cents i bought 180 copies for eight cents a piece that card became star city games 299 which as a playset because there was a playset card during rtr you could trade easily a playset set into a shock land no problems I did this so many times, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Like, I knew that I should do it, and it eventually would help me long term, but uh, I just got so bored, I couldn't do it anymore. All right, last card. This one is a free dollar card. Uh, two to four is a very good range, and in my experience, that's where you want to be. You don't want to be at the high end because the high end has more risk during reprints because you put more money in and you don't actually have that many copies. So the reward is not that great. You're not going to double, Lily Honor is not going to go from 90 to 180, right? That's not going to happen. But could Adrami's Al call go from $3 to 10? Tripling, yeah, I think it's possible. All right, let me, I'll play this way. This card is insanely good. Um, yes, it is two colors. So that makes it a little more difficult in EDH than, let's say, Demonic. And yes, it limits you to a creature, but it is instant speed. It is card into your hand, and that's super important because you don't lose card advantage. Let me give you an example of like cards similar to it in blue. So there's cards that cost one and a blue, and then you get to draw a card, accumulated knowledge. So the first accumulated knowledge is just a filter. The second one actually gives you advantage. This one gives you card selection, 
and card draw. So you cannot forget that this is pretty much cycling, replacing itself at instant speed, which is something that green and white don't really have that many instants. Fantastic in EDH. I'm a buyer of this all day long at $3 or $2, which is what it is at now. So hopefully you guys, I mean, Modern Masters as a box. Yeah, don't avoid that. Oh, sorry, Masters 25. There's so many of these master sets as a box. Yeah, avoid it like the plague, but these singles are really, really good. And the more people poo-poo Masters 25, the more opportunity exists. These are my top five. Again, I'm not saying go out and buy 100 copies of this. I'm just saying that having extra playset or even having a playset, um, it's going to save you money in the long run and make your trade binder a lot better in terms of when you do need a card and you don't want to pay cash for it, these cards should go up in value when you need them to. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.